Good morning in Colombia. Good evening uh, from Dubai. Uh, Ana Maria, thank you very much for joining us. You are the chair of the International Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services Global Assessment Report on the State of, of Biodiversity and Ecosystems. And last year, you made headlines with, with the publishing of a report indicating that one million animal and plant species potentially face extinction, many of them within decades. So let me start by asking you, how serious is this problem and, and why should we care? Yeah, well, thank you very much, first of all, Sean, for inviting me. And um, I want to uh, say uh, uh, that IPBES, the Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, uh, started uh, its work in 2012 and um, conveys more than 137 countries and a lot of experts that are producing assessments and uh, deliverables around a lot of things um, and priorities on biodiversity and nature contributions to people. Our latest assessment was the global assessment. And uh, the global assessment indeed uh, state that around 1 million species of plant and animals are risk of extinction. Now, how we are doing? We are doing that. I cannot uh, use soft words on this because the message is clear. It's crystal clear. We, uh, the, the biodiversity is declining faster than any time in human history. So, um, and to put some data on the table, you know that right now, around the 75% of the land, land surface is significantly altered. And the 66% of the ocean are experiencing increasing cumulative impact. So the beautiful planet, green and blue planet that we imagine in our minds is no longer that, is with gray and um, brown colors. Regrettably, we are treating bad our planet. Uh, so what can we do and, and why do people can uh, care more about that? Uh, if, if we see, and, and my, first, my, my, my first question is, the people is aware that they use daily, on a daily basis, the biodiversity? They know that the food that is in the table, that the uh, customs that they wear, that uh, a lot of things around them are based on biodiversity. Um, if we are not conscious of that, then it's very difficult to say to the people, hey, be aware of the loss of biodiversity. And I want to say, for example, that nature plays a critical role providing not only food, but feed, energy, medicines, genetic resources, and a very wide variety of material and non-material uh, things that are fundamental for people. For example, for the physical well-being, for maintaining culture. Um, and that's why, for example, indigenous and local communities are very aware of biodiversity because the uh, health of biodiversity and of the nature that in the territories that they live uh, in uh, are basic for their culture, for the maintenance of the culture. And also around 4 billion people rely primarily on natural medicines for the healthcare. So we live not only surrounded by biodiversity, by, by but we depend on the uh, good health of ecosystem services for living, for our daily living. So that's why it's important to take care about that. So on that note, if I can turn to travel and tourism, because the tourism industry depends heavily 
on biodiversity for its own survival as an industry, but it also contributes significantly to, to conservation. One of the negatives on its balance sheet is its carbon footprint, and we know the impacts on climate change, and the industry is working hard to, to address that. But can I ask you in your global assessment report, what does the science tells, tell us about the relationship between tourism and biodiversity? Okay, well, the first thing that I want to counter question to you, if I may, is where are the favorite places to go for a tourist? Well, I think over 50% of tourists go to nature-based destinations. I think it was 55% in 2017 before COVID hit. And the other 50% of uh, the tourists goes where? Well, I think they go still to urban environments, but even in those urban environments, they're in habitats, and those habitats are important to nature. That's right. So uh, there is a very, very uh, specific link between tourism and biodiversity. But of course, we, are, uh, uh, the, we have trends on that. You know that the long uh, distance transportation for good and people, including the tourism, have grown dramatically in the past 20 years. And that have tremendous consequences for nature overall and of course for climate change. Um, and also the tourism grew in the last 20 years, both domestically and internationally. So, uh, all the tourism chain in the past 20 years have grown, including the consumption and the production and um, new, um, and, and new uh, tourism um, hotels and infrastructure. So all the things had left a very heavy uh, impacts on the nature and on the ecosystems where the new uh, tourism industry is, uh, is settled. Um, but also by the other side, we have found that the ecotourism also is racing, the demand of, for ecotourism is racing. Now, I, I, and it's a personal point of view, not a best point of view, but in my personal point of view, not all the ecotourism is sustainable. So um, some people say, okay, I'm going to do ecotourism because I'm going to go to uh, the tropical forest and uh, spend two days uh, um, in the wild. But maybe the people that goes to the wild uh, are not treating well nature, are not treating well the biodiversity. So we have to take care about that. Um, uh, and another thing that is related, and not, maybe maybe not all the people talk about that, is uh, that the number of visitors and protected areas also has been increasing in the in, uh, in the past years, and that is very important, but also have very significant impacts in the protected areas. So, whenever we go or wherever we uh, have the tourism in, um, in, in the different ecosystems around the world, we're going to have also impacts. Nature, uh, 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 tourism by itself is fantastic. I love tourism. <laughs> I love to be a tourist. But also as, uh, as almost all the activities coming from the human beings have impacts in nature. And it depends on what, if we are going to have a large scale tourism or a small scale tourism, we're going to have large or small scale transformations in our uh, ecosystems and uh, impacts in our biodiversity. So I think the purpose of this series of conversations is also to find those best practices that we can replicate and scale up because That's as right. you say, yes. Responsible tourism is about rooting out what is bad and promoting what is good. So one of the strengths of That's your right. assessment report was also 
you're not only focused on presenting us with evidence, but also with options for better informed decision making. Can you maybe give us a few examples of if you speak to, to governments and to industry, what's your policy options and what's a few practical examples that enable us to do better? Okay. Um, but the global assessment was very, uh, and, and, and indeed our, uh, our platform has a very global in general um, uh, Polish policy messages, yes. Uh, and uh, the, the first one is transformative changes. The basic one is if you continue doing what you are doing right now, we are not going to have this wonderful world in a short time uh, in the future. So we have to change. And in the case of the tourism industry, I could say again personally that if the industry did, did not change uh, behaviors and do not change the impacts, then it will be very difficult to maintain the quality of the tourism because the quality of the tourism relies also on the quality of the environment that they offer as, uh, uh, as, uh, as the, um, the, the main attraction for the tourism. So it's very important. Um, what we can do, and it's very easy, and uh, looking at my kids, for example, I, I, I can imagine that, uh, you know that in, in the, the resorts and the hotels, they have activities for, 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 uh, for the children. What about if this activities includes also uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning uh, the, the, the shore, cleaning the, the beach in the, ca in the cases that we have the sea, um, that we are around the sea? Or what about if we plant a tree uh, in the case uh, that we are in an uh, uh, ecosystem, um, a forest ecosystem. So maybe we can have activities for the tourists that are interesting for them and includes uh, conservation activities and would be very interesting. Also, uh, something that I, is, 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 I, I crossed to my mind uh, right now, but is not in the global assessment. <laughs> I have to say that, is that why the restaurants of the hotels does not use in their menus local food instead of a lot of food that comes uh, by airplane or by boat and uh, uh, have a very high uh, carbon footprints. So uh, I think that there are a lot of things that uh, the, uh, the, the tourist industry can do for conservation and can do for changing uh, the, the uh, and, and transforming uh, the way that we do business, that you do business, and the way that we uh, enjoy uh, the pleasure of nature. Because at the end, the tourism gives it, it is the is the opportunity to uh, gives the opportunity to bring this space for spiritual and physical rest, and with the nature, with good nature we're going to have good tourism because we're going to uh, uh, have that reach that, that objective, that rest physically and emotionally in a good environment and doing things well. And Maria, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Um, I really so appreciate your focus and each one of us taking responsibility and ownership. Uh, because it's not only a message to governments and to industry, but to each and every one of us to, to be custodians and, and to not, not spend the natural capital now that belong to future generations. So thank you very much for your time. No, thank you very much uh, for your invitation again. And I hope that this is, will be useful for the tourism industry. Thank you.